And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Josh, we've had all kinds of fight announcements. There's some really good ones out there, too. And on a UFC fight night, it's going to start off with Jared Cannonier taking on Kyle Barhalo, a guy who has been on fire in the middleweight division. It's going to be a great fight, man. I mean, both these guys match up very well. It's a big step up in competition for Barhalo, though. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's he's so fun, John, but he makes a lot of mistakes still. I look at him like a kind of like a Shara, Bola, um, uh, Shara Magomedov. I look at him a little bit very similar. They both make a lot of mistakes, but they're very fun to watch fight. That's normally how it works, isn't it? You get the best fights out of the ones that are so young. They don't care if they mess up. I use my athleticism to get out of it, you know, and I'm going to be on top and I'll get back to my feet. They're fun because they never stop moving. They always keep fighting. But what happens is when they fight someone like a Jared Cannonier, who's just a crafty, grizzled veteran, someone who's been through it all, heavyweight, 205, 185, He's done it all. He's seen all sizes. How does he deal with someone like Bahalo? You know, when I'm going to be honest, Bahalo's at 6-0 and in the UFC now, and he's come in and he's taken on guys of all different styles, guys that are great grapplers, guys that are great strikers. He's never had that one that you've taken a look at that has been the, wow, he's just great everywhere. But when you're looking at Jared Cannonier, you're looking at striking. Jared, for the most part, doesn't use his wrestling. He uses it to be a defender, doesn't want to be taken down. I'm not sure that I think Kyle can actually get Jared down with, with a wrestling takedown. It would be more of a, a strike that would hurt him and put him down and him able to get on top of him. But like he's been in there against guys like Paul Craig that are submission specialists and just put a, put a whooping on him in the top position. So he's comfortable being on the ground with anybody. He's also, you know, his fight before that was against uh, Abus. Magomedov, and you take a look at a guy that's got fantastic striking, very good at what he does. You take a look at what you know Abus did with even Sean Strickland in his first round. You know, put a lot of shots on him. Well, what did he do? Took him down, controlled him on the ground, beat him up, just continued that onslaught throughout the rounds. Got the decision win. He's a smart fighter, and he knows that against someone like Cannonier, I don't want to just be in this stand-up fight with him. So we're going to see what he does. I think it's a great matchup, and I do think that Bahalo definitely has a chance at continuing his win streak in the UFC. Did you just bring up Abus versus Sean Strickland? Look, John, in first round, everyone's good in the yeah, first yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, the first round, I know. Second round was different, but in the first round, and you're talking about Sean Strickland, a guy that wants to be in the stand-up, and Abus was putting some big shots on him. My sex life is perfect details that I can do a lot in one minute. <laughs> like that's, you're talking about the first round, John. Look, it's one minute, I know. five minutes, whatever. First round. Bet US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Um, look, another fight is you got the Michelle Pajaya fight versus uh Fluffy Hernandez. Oh, Fluffy. Good, good fight, man. These two guys right now are on the come up. Both of them fighting their asses off. Both of them having great performances. And the two of them are going to collide in the center of the cage. I mean, how do you see that fight going? Man, I'll tell you what. Fluffy Hernandez, is he's really just come along as a fighter in the UFC. He's just good everywhere. Pahe is so explosive. And at 185, I think he's way better than he was at 170 because he was killing himself. He's a huge individual at, at 185. To sit there and think that guy used to get to 170 is crazy. Sure. But it used to absolutely be a detriment to his performance. He would get tired and then he would lose fights that he should never lose based upon he's got no gas. So at 185, it's the perfect weight class for him. I look at it and, and this is one of those ones that you, you can go and say, wow, you know, both guys are, are fun to watch. Both of them are exciting. This is a toss up. I think it is a toss up. I think, but fluffy to me, is someone that as the fight goes on, he'll get stronger. And not that Pahea has True. gotten tired at 185, but he has at 170 shown that he tends yep. to slow down. Will he so do we'll that against out. someone who pushes the pace just as much as he does in rounds, you know, the end of round two and into round three? Fluffy will oh, be there. Yeah, that's that's going to be a five-round fight, I believe. Oh, it's going to? Okay, if it is a five-round five fight, round then fight. I'm going to go Fluffy. 
I'm gonna yeah, go. Fluff. You take a look and you say Anthony Hernandez has proven he has got a gas tank. So. He can dig. He digs deep. He knows. Not that he, the Pajaya could not finish him before that, but if it's going in the later rounds, which it can. When you look at Fluffy, remember when he beat uh, Hadolfo Vieira, right? It just like yeah. he weathered the storm in that first round, and I know it's a, a different style of fight. But when he sees that you're starting to break, he starts to relax more. He starts to put more pace. He starts to like do a little bit more extra. I think in a five round fight, I think that Pahea is going to have his hands full after rounds two, maybe I think early round three or halfway through round two. I think uh, Fluffy's going to start to t- take over. Do you know those guys? And I'll give you an example Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz. They don't do anything that's super great, but their pressure, their constant touch, 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 making you work when you want to take a step back and rest like a Michael Chandler, take a step back, hop around, take a deep breath, and then come back in. No, no, no. He doesn't let you do that. And so Michelle Pahea is going to, he's used to dictating the pace because he's the bigger guy or he just is so active and crazy and wild. He runs around. Everyone's just like, okay, let him do his thing. But then that's how he controls the pace of the fight. And then so he can take his breath when he wants. He can control how yeah. the pace of the fight by doing stuff like that. Fluffy's going to just be like, no, I'm good. I'm going to let you do your thing, but I'm going to keep put pressuring, pressuring you to try to put you to the back to the fence, try and grind this out. Fluffy is very underrated on the ground. He's very underrated on the feet. He's very underrated in terms of his fight IQ. He knows what he does well, and he implements it. I think he's going to start to take this fight over if it is a five-round fight by rounds two and a half into the three. My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good-tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. But the last fight, John, the last Carla fight we got Sparza it. in her last fight. <clears throat> good for her. Taking on Tisha Pennington. I look at this as this is actually a really good matchup. Tisha Pennington, someone that brings a lot of pressure, a lot of volume. Uh, she brings a pace. Carla is the wrestler. You know, obviously, her stand up has gotten better and better throughout her career, which now she can throw hands with anyone, but has always got that in the back pocket, her ability to take you down and grind you and, and just steal rounds from you. But this is going to be, you got to figure, Carla was the uh, inaugural 115 pound straw weight champion. She ended up losing that to Joanna Jenjacek. Then she won it back when she took it from Rose Nama Yunus. This is going to be her farewell fight. She's had a phenomenal career. I love the fact that she's you know going to go out, but she's going to go out with a tough guy yeah. competition in uh, Pennington. Yeah, look, who used to be Tisha Torres. Both of them are. I don't know. I'm just a fan of both of them. You know, Carla coming yep. from the wrestling background. I've always had you know. I always try to support a lot of the wrestlers and just their growth. She, you know, she's been criticized along the way. She's just kind of like put it over her shoulder, like no big deal. I love it about her. She comes out, she tries to do the best she can to get the wins. You know, um, she's kind of helped pave the way for females MMA. She's one of those. Oh, no doubt about it. Absolutely. And she just had no a baby. So I think that's another thing. Let me kind of come back. Have well, my both farewell. of them. Both of them do. Yes. Both of them. Both, both of, them. of them. So they, um, they're both fantastic people. That's what makes it easier to root for them. They've been around yes. since the earlier days. Now they're, you know, they're getting a little bit older, but they understand that, look, I'm going to try to get in as many as I can right now and enjoy this lifestyle because it's all going to come to an end. You both have new lifestyles now with little ones at home. You'll see. They'll, you'll oh, yeah. see. It'll take oh, it yeah. over, but it's fun. And so I'm, I'm, in, I'm going to enjoy this fight, knowing that it's Carla's last one, seeing if she can get the win and Tisha, you know, and see how much more she's grown since her last fight. It's good to have them both back inside the cage and uh, new new mothers. Congratulations to both of them, but good for them. I'm looking forward to it. That's going to that's gonna wrap it on this on these three fight topics there and these three fight announcements. But, John, we will. We will always see you.